So in this next segment, what I'd like to do is discuss pricing and how to develop a pricing list by looking at other people's work and by looking at how I've designed a price list. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so uh, this is a document that I have that I developed so that I would have a sense of what I felt was fair for shipping and for right now for what my prices are. And it's not priced per inch, it's priced by uh, a comparison to luxury items like um, meals and iPhones and how hard I can work and how hard I'm willing to work on something. So for me, an 18 by 24 painting right now, I sell that in oil on, and I. this is also kind of important, I don't paint on stretch canvas anymore because of there's problems with shipping uh, things that are on stretch canvas. I charge 158 for that, and you can go to my Etsy store, and we're going to look at some stats in terms of that in a minute. Acrylic paintings on paper are a little bit less expensive because those are easier for me. They're more like wash drawings, and uh, and you know I sell significantly less works on paper than I sell the oils. Just go really fast. People want oil paintings, uh, and you can see that I've got this price point for things. And one of the wonderful things is. I draw all the time. And the fact that I spend most of my evenings just sitting in front of the TV making drawings makes it... The fact that I spend so much time in the evenings and in the afternoons, I'm, I'm kind of a, an artaholic. It's the only thing that makes me feel good. Um, so. I draw all the time and I've got drawers full of drawings and what I tend to do is the drawings I make I if someone buys an oil painting I'll just go into the drawer I'll find a drawing that looks like the oil painting they bought and I'll send that along for free uh, just as an extra and I you know that's just good business practice so this these are the prices that I charge on Etsy for my work and I'll show you the Etsy site in a minute but then there's the the notion of uh, commissions and how to um, charge for commissions. So I also even have a document for that. And I try to be as honest as I possibly can with people. So um, when they, usually on Facebook, someone writes to me and they see a portrait and they go, well, I'd like to have a portrait of my boyfriend or my wife or whatever. And, um, and I go, okay, well, portraits are super scary for me and I charge more for them and so I immediately justify the fact that I don't like to do portraits and they have to get through my resistance to wanting to do a commission work because it's a problem however lately lots of people have been commissioning me to do portraits it's sort of a damning thing because I guess I'm okay at them and people tend to like them they see the other things and there's something that just scared the pants off of me but so I state exactly what's going on. The commissions take four to week, four weeks, and then sometimes it uh, it, it takes a while to dry. Um, I give them the full option of rejecting it, um, no questions asked. And that's another thing. Artists get super grumpy. You ship someone something they don't like it, and then uh, or or it gets damaged in the mail, and artists are like, "I'm out this money." You know what? Just refund their money. Don't ask any questions, and tell them to keep the peace. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but you know what? It's not worth you getting uptight about it, and it's not worth freaking out about it. So if you were to look at my prices for the commissions I have, um, I actually doubled the prices for everything. Uh, and that way it's easier for me to deal with. I love doing drawing commissions. That's, that's my favorite thing. So you know, um, to compare the, the two um, side by side, uh, you can see that... Um, I really, uh, you know, I've gotten, even even my my wife kind of gives me a hard time about how little I charge my, my, wor my work sometimes, but this is okay. So you can see how much more I charge for the commissions versus that. So I want to talk to you about an artist who I really admire, and this is the segue that brings us to talking about um, artists who are, um, who do similar work to yours and who you can respect and feel like, well, wh how, how are they selling their work? What's going on? 
Um, I'm friends with this guy, Brendan Sanborn, on Facebook, and, and he's bought some of my work, and I think I bought some of his as well. Um, I really like what he does, although it's a different vein than, than what I work in. He's a, he's a slightly different kind of artist. He tends to work with homoerotic art. And this is his website, so I'm kind of trying to give you a little shout out about him. And these are some of his paintings, and they look very similar to mine, except for he uses watercolor. Uh, his sense of composition is slightly different. Um, he's, he's a different artist than me, uh, but I really like his stuff. And when I scroll down and I look at his work, you can see that he's got a slightly higher price point than I do. Um, probably, I don't know, uh, it seems like $50 to $100 more uh, for most pieces than I do. And you know what? That's totally cool. Uh, and I'm happy for him. And one of the things that I do about him is I give shout outs uh, on Facebook about his art. And when he puts something on Facebook that I think is really cool, I share it um, because I know that it's counterintuitive to people to think that there's an artist who's doing work similar to yours and they are selling something and they're even selling it for slightly higher and you're helping advertise their work. But that's all bullshit. Um, when you help other people, you help yourself. And the other thing is, um, which you know, I just realized a couple of weeks ago, some of the artists that I um, really dig and who do similar work to me, I'll have people collect my work and their work and will send me photographs of their pages, of, of their walls, and they'll have a Brendan Sanborn painting hanging right next to mine. So don't think that it's not about competition, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So giving someone else a shout out and, and helping to advertise someone else's work can only help you, okay? Now here's the other deal about pricing. Um, he has his policy on commissioning work and it's slightly different than mine and you might want to emulate uh, Brendan's um, commissions uh, his idea about it and um, he's a little bit more strict than me which I he wants a 20% a, a refundable deposit uh, once he starts a preliminary sketch and then he submits it for approval I don't like doing all of that I just want to make it and then if they like it they like it if they don't then I just don't charge them for it but that's totally fine with me but I also insist that I be able to to uh, pay for it myself so I think Brendan has a very fair uh, price commission structure and his work is so reasonably priced that um, again I would say go buy this guy's work if you're interested in, in collecting homoerotic artwork and uh, and you want some really nicely done stuff this guy's a, 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 a really good artist and I think that you should work with him all right, so now obviously one of the ways that you can f figure out what your pricing should be is you do a comparison kind of shopping to other galleries and, and see what other galleries are doing. Now, one of the things that I do obviously is I give shout outs to other artists who I think are absolutely fabulous, okay? And um, this guy, Andrew Salgado, I'm really taken with his work. I, I like the style of his work. I like the paint quality. I like the color, uh, the architecture of the paint and the, the mark making. Just a really good artist. You know, I love this stuff. And I, I looked him up online and went to some of the galleries. I can't find the prices for his work. And when that happens, it means that it's something I can't afford. And um, one of the ways that it depends on what city you live in and you might want to make an art trip to Chicago or San Francisco or New York or or even Minneapolis you need to go to some galleries and you need to see what the prices in these galleries are and also you need to be honest with the quality um, how your work stacks up against this these artists work um, you know these are pretty large paintings they're being sold in a gallery that has a lot of cultural capital meaning that they have a lot of uh, pull in their community and so they're gonna be close probably to three to four thousand dollars the way that I used to sell my work and if this guy is connected socially and he has a following of his own and the gallery has a following he's making a good living and that's good good for him he's a great artist and he deserves that so one of the other things that um, I do is I look up artists who I dig you know and and I constantly blog about them and talk about them this guy Patrick Puckett uh, Robert Patrick Puckett oh my god what beautiful work 
Um, now, now the problem is, is I can't find prices for his stuff, which means that I can't afford them. And when I go through his site, um, they're usually sold. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and they're also big paintings. And I live in a small condo in, in Palo Alto. You know, I can barely afford it because I'm a college professor and a, and a starving artist. But, oh, my God, look how nice these are. The graphic design in them. Oh, what lovely paintings. Anyway, uh, I don't want to go off too much about that. Um, but, you know, so I visit other galleries. And one of the galleries that I visit pre pretty regularly or, or try to follow is this gallery in uh, San Francisco called the Shooting Gallery. Um, the guy who runs it, his name is Justin Jarla. He's a good guy. And um, he has a really great eye. There's no way I'll get into this gallery because I don't do uh, sort of avant-garde art I'm, I, I do different kinds of things but he picks really nice uh, photography and really great art that um, you can really you know get lost in his gallery but the reason why I'm suggesting you go and visit the galleries is <laughs> you can see what people are doing but they're not the uh, the price lists are not up so one of the things that you oh look at that 4,800 for this Van Arno that gives you an idea of what, what the price could be. Let's see what, what some of his other prices are. Um, this guy is so top shelf, 4100 You know, that's actually so reasonable. If I had $4,000 laying around, I'd buy one. Um, wow, he's such a great artist. Sorry. <laughs> um, so if you look at the sizes of these, they're 36 by 24. This guy has been painting for 30 years. He is written about in Juxtapose magazine all the time. He is just phenomenal at rendering. His concepts are off the hook. Um, he's just a really great artist. Um, and an 8 by 10 painting is 950 bucks. If you think you can compete with that, then, then you should apply to the shooting gallery. And, uh, but make sure you research the galleries, and I have a video on that that I share also. So now let's take a look at another gallery that's a sort of consignment gallery called Hang Art. Um, and, you know, I have a sort of love-hate relationship with this gallery, and I'll tell you why. Um, one of the things about this gallery was I was showing with them, and I was showing, and I was selling for, you know, pretty reasonable prices. And you can see a 60 by 60 inch painting here is 3,200. Um, and they, you know, they have other artists that you can, uh, you can check out their work and you can get a sense of the prices of whatever their stuff is. So, um, she, this, this artist, Yoon Jung Lee, really lovely painting, 20 by 20 inch, uh, canvas here, 1800 for purchase. So that's, these are nice, reasonable prices. Um, now there's going to be sales tax on top of that and that, oh yeah, I didn't even mention that before. I don't charge sales tax, I pay it myself, and I also don't charge shipping when I, when I sell things on Etsy. I build that all in. So I assume that half of my, my cost on Etsy, so if a painting's you know, um, $138 or whatever, I know that about 30 to 40 of that is going towards shipping and taxes. So you know that reduces my profit, so that's something to think about. Now this gallery is a really great gallery to work with. Um, they have reasonable pricing, they have, uh, they'll rent your stuff, you can buy things online. The only problem with them is that they got um, offended with the content of my art. They thought it was too um, erotic and, and too over the top and, it, that, and I always thought that was kind of funny because they are a San Francisco gallery and they didn't even want to deal with, the, uh, with, with any of my gay stuff, which was interesting. So those are some ways to get a bead on, you know, your pricing. And you might want to just Google some of these things to figure it out. And uh, it's just, this is just a general discussion that I wanted to just help you out with, with figuring out these kinds of things. Now, <sighs> you know, I always feel weird about doing this. But one of the things that I want to do with you is I want to actually share some real nuts and bolts numbers like I did at the beginning of the video to take a look at what you can expect when you're selling things on Etsy and when you're looking at other artists' work. Okay, so I did a search for gay art on Etsy, and I chose the um, the handmade stuff. Okay, so there's drawing and illustration, there's prints, there's paintings, and so on and so forth. And this is just the entry page, the the things that floated to the top. And you can see that the prices again are pretty consistent with what 
hang art galleries is showing and with what I'm selling mine for. Some of these are prints, some of these are paintings, but it'll give you a price point for showing on, um, on Etsy and let you know what you can expect to have as reasonable prices. Now, people think that all they need to do is post their work on one of these sites. That's not true. You're going to have to do a ton of marketing on top of that. And if you want to do that, I have, oh, <laughs> look, mine popped up right away. There's my bear in a jock strap, 38 bucks for a 9 by 12 drawing. Um, you should, you're going to have to market your own work. That's one of the things that's the most important thing. So let's take a look at what Etsy charges and how much money I make off of my paintings. Just for full disclosure, uh, I'm not showing off because I don't make that much money. I just want you to know. So once you have an Etsy account, you can go to your shop and then you can go to a link underneath your shop that says stats. And the stats um, give you a it's really wonderful on Etsy how what they what they provide for you and that's why I'm not showing with any other uh, online site also because keeping track of my inventory is just a bear so this year so far uh, since um, January I've made almost thirteen um, thousand uh, dollars now remember that twenty percent of that probably is expenses of shipping of mailing stuff and of spending money on um, paying sales tax and also even paying for advertising on Facebook and some other things. So the real, probably I've made about eight or nine thousand dollars worth of profits. It's kind of nice, it gives you a month by month thing, tells you what your promoted listings are, um, and you can read through these things a little bit more carefully and see what your keywords are and learn how to use it. And the nice thing about Etsy is they send out lots of announcements. Now, let's take a look at, um, well, the last 12 months, okay? Oh, that's about $19,000, so that's pretty good. Uh, things are getting a little bit better for me because I reduced my prices and I'm, I've learned how to market a little bit better. Let's look at last year. So last year, um, I made half of, well, it looks like I might make double this year if my marketing keeps going well and I keep producing good work. Uh, this is something, you know, people never seem to really talk about is you got to make really good art. Um, and how dare they not like my work? You know, I slaved for 15 hours over this. Well, you slaving over something for 15 hours compared to someone else who can do it in an hour and a half and charge less you got to think about that. Uh, sorry if that offends you. Let's take a look at stats for um, a specific date. Uh, I've been showing with Etsy since uh, 2010, I believe. Uh, so let me give uh, a, um, a time period here. And let's take a look at uh, 2010. and go through, because you know, I've been working on, on marketing forever, um, you know, oh, I guess I should make that one. Oh. What am I thinking? All right, let's apply this. 120. 14,000? Let's do 11 to 12. Ah, some years not so good. Okay. Ah, that year sucked. I guess it depends on the finances and on how good my work was. So this is just a way I wanted to give you a sense of how you could track your own work and, and see what promotions cost. And you can really get a sense of your money. Uh, one of the things that you might also even want to consider um, is that uh, if you have someone uh, who's a friend who's an accounting student or, or someone who's into business, they you could sit down and sort of discuss these strategies and maybe watch this video with them and, and come up with some ideas about it. So I hope that this helps to give you some suggestions about how to market your work and how to price your work. 
Good luck. I, I really do mean that. 